a number of days ago I saw this video here come up in my feed this uh, Jordan Peterson philosopher guy and it's a the logic hour and it says thou shalt not kill biblical series Exodus and it says it's a wrong translation right can, there you can see it and so I clicked on it and I'll click on it again here uh, so we can see this thing and um, Sorry, advertisements. Okay. Um, and they're sitting here in this weird looking room. Looks like some kind of dark satanic gathering of philosophical weirdos. I don't know who these guys are. Whatever. No idea. But uh, here's the Joker sitting here with his bizarre looking suit. I don't know why he'd wear something like that. But he asked this devil here on the corner what he thinks about the translation in the book of Exodus in the King James Bible. And uh, I'm going to cover what this guy says here. Dennis, you got anything to say about thou shalt not kill? It'll be brief. It's, it's an incorrect translation, but I don't blame uh, the King James people. Uh, I do blame any modern translator who, who translates it as do not kill. Okay, so now let's think about this. I don't blame the King James people, but any modern translator, they shouldn't be translating. So what are you implying? That the King James translators were not as brilliant as you are? You see? Think about that. Logical fallacy number one. The King James translators were dumber than him and other modern people that know better translations. Okay, that's uh, evolution philosophy. Uh, no, actually they were smarter in 1611. Okay, uh, you had, uh, I forget which one it was, uh, Lancelot Andrews or <clears throat> one of the translators, and he was uh, able to read and speak Hebrew when he was seven years old. So seven or eight years old, I forget the exact age, but as a young boy. Uh, brilliant, brilliant men. Uh, one of the translators wrote a, a dictionary in Persian. Okay, these guys were incredibly intelligent, and there were 54 of them at the beginning, 47 until the translation was done, took seven years. I think they knew the difference between the word kill and murder. I really think that they do, or that they did. But there's a wrong translation in the King James Bible. It's unfortunate and whatever. So in other words, from 1611 up until the time we got the modern versions, beginning about 1881 with the revised version, you mean to tell me that nobody really understood what that meant? Nobody reading the King James Bible that entire time could see that God told them routinely to go to war and kill the bad guys throughout the Old Testament. And people just didn't understand that thou shalt not kill meant that you're not to murder. All right. And uh, what about Matthew chapter 19 here? Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter life, into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Goes down through. Um, <clears throat> so all the, you know, the King James people, they didn't have access to us modern wisdom. Uh, it says thou shalt not kill. And that's very unfortunate. And, you know, but it's the actually murder. Well, all you have to do is just compare scripture with scripture. And you see that kill is synonymous with murder. <laughs> okay, it's not an unfortunate, unfortunate, it's the wrong translation. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, and then the guy gets into some Hebrew words there and whatever else and things. But the whole point is, before you get into Hebrew and Greek and, and everything else, because you have to understand, Hebrew and Greek words have many different ways that they can be translated according to context, according to which, you know, uh, lexicon and, or, uh, uh, yeah, lexicon you're using. There's different ways to translate the text. So it's not just a simple thing to say, well, you see the Hebrew word here is such, and it should be always translated as murder. Uh, no, it shouldn't. Okay, there's a lot of places where you have uh, a Greek word or a Hebrew word that can be translated differently according to the context. So this guy just, they lie like this. These devils, they lie and they destroy your faith in the word of God. And you go, Oh, the, the Hebrew word should be such and such in the King James. The King James Bible has it wrong. Oh, no, what can I do? Oh, no. Well, just logically think about this stuff for a minute. 
forget the Hebrew and the Greek word stuff. You want to waste time on ancient languages that very few people ever use anymore? That's up to you. But as for me, I'm going to read the King James Bible. And again, think about it. The King James Bible is too old and archaic to understand. It's got unfortunate translations. What should I do? You should study Hebrew and Greek <laughs> that you can't understand. Uh, yeah. But think about the logical argumentation of these people. It's been an unfortunate translation. Uh, people understood it just fine. And you compare scripture with scripture, you get the same, you know, it's a synonymous thing there. Jesus says, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not kill in the Old Testament. Obviously, thou shalt not kill means that you're not supposed to murder somebody. Obviously. <laughs> so uh, don't fall for this philosophical garbage stuff that tries to get you back to uh, languages like Hebrew and Greek. Okay? Um, please just stick to the King James Bible. Trust it. It's been used by more Christians than anything else. Um, God didn't see to it to preserve the original Hebrew writings and the original Greek autographs. Let me say it that way, the autographs. God didn't preserve them. God doesn't care. You know, you go back to the Old Testament and uh, God writes on stone the Ten Commandments, the originals, and Moses takes it and goes down and he smashes it on the ground and God doesn't say, hey, Moses, you just destroyed the original autographs. I hey, just, oh, here's another one. Okay, it's not a big deal, right? But you look at the power behind this King James Bible. That's why even today, a month ago, sitting there with the Joker at the head of the table, and they're still attacking the King James Bible. These guys still can't leave it alone. Why? Why did they continue to, to attack this book? Because Satanists, ministers of Satan, they know what God's word is. Think about it. I mean, how many... How many of these roundtable discussion type of things do you see where they're sitting around attacking other works that are 400 plus years old? You know, let's let's uh, go after uh, uh, you know the writings of Plato or Socrates or whatever, and let's attack it. And they don't bother with that, but they go after the King James Bible. And I realize Plato and Socrates are older than 400 years, so don't put that in the comments. But but uh, just watch out for this stuff. All right, read and study the King James Bible with an open mind. Uh, logically, remember that uh, if it was so horribly translated, it wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. There were a lot of other translations that came out, um, and they're gone. Poof. All right, the King James Bible will change your life. Um, so, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.